Hey everybody, welcome back to the Security Brief. Today we're gonna to talk about how to build an incident response plan for your business. So basically what an incident response plan is, is essentially just a playbook. So a checklist of the things that you're gonna do when something bad happens. Because no matter how good your security is, there's still a good chance at some point that somebody's gonna break something or steal something or something's gonna not work. And if that's something that's gonna have a major impact on your business, you wanna be sure that you're able to execute your recovery as quick as possible. So here are the five steps to an incident response plan. You can start this today in your business. It'll make a big difference. First is listing the, the potential incidents. So what are the things that could happen to your business that would have a very bad impact on the business. That could be things with like a breach where uh, somebody accesses your database and uh, all, all of a sudden confidential data uh, gets, gets taken out of the, of the company and, and, and put out under the dark web. That could be a system going down so it's not, no longer available to your customers, whether that's a website or an e-commerce site or a web app. Um, that could be you know, an integrity issue where the information that your system spits out is no longer correct. So just look at your own business. It's going to be unique to your, to your, to your business um, and your products and your services. And just really sit down and, and, and have a look at that and make a list of the things that could cause big problems. The next step is really identifying the key players. So essentially building your incident response team. Now in small businesses, that's likely going to be your security team, but either way, it's just really critical that you have a group of people that are going to uh, be able to build this plan, test the plan, and are going to be ready to execute the plan when a problem happens. So what I recommend um, for in terms of the types of people and, and the talent you want to have on that team, you definitely want to have somebody from senior management that's able to make decisions. You're going to want to have a, a chief technical officer, a chief information officer, somebody that knows the data, the technology, basically understands the tech stack of your business and where data is uh, very intimately in the organization. You're going to want to have somebody from HR that can basically you know, communicate with the team internally about problems and, and understand what, what you, you can and cannot do in that regard. PR and communications is important. If you have a breach, for example, you're going to have to notify your customers. You may even have to speak with the press. So you want to have somebody there that, that, has, that has that responsibility and knowledge. And having somebody with legal expertise, a lawyer preferably, is really great. So there's a lot of things, for example, if you have a breach in certain jurisdictions, there's mandatory breach notifications that need to happen and there's processes that need to be followed there. So you want to have somebody that understands that side of things. And, and last but certainly not least, you definitely want to have somebody on this team Team, whether they're a consultant or, or somebody that just starts you out and helps you get up to pace and is available if there is a really bad incident that happens, you want to have somebody with, with security experience that understands how to respond to incidents. That's a key, key, place, uh, key player on the team. Step three, now that you have your team and your, and your incident potential incidents listed, now we're going to dive into actually developing the plan. So this is where you're going to go through, look at each one of those potential incidents, pretend it's happening and just sort of jot down what are the things that, that need to be dealt with. And with everybody, if you have that proper team there and expertise, you're going to really be able to come up with a list of things that would actually help you solve the problem. And I'm not going to get into what those items are because it really is going to be unique to your business and, and the type of incident you're experiencing. But having written plans so it's thought out in advance is going to go a long way to helping you move along quickly. Number four is establishing your reporting procedure. So um, that starts right from who discovers the breach. Might be a customer, might be an employee. How, do they have a contact information? Do they know how to pull a fire alarm, essentially? So that might be a, a number they dial or an email that they can send or a text that they can send. You should be set up so that your team, your incident response team, is going to be notified as quick as possible when this incident happens so they can jump on pulling the proper plan for this and engaging. Part of that is going to mean contacting in a lot of cases. Government agencies, if it's mandatory breach, you may have to call your, your lawyer, you may have to call your data center. You want to make sure that all the potential numbers, you have communication to those people. Emergency contacts for everybody that could be important for every, for every incident you're going, to, you're going to look at and explore in your business. Number five is practice, test, and improve. So having these plans and then putting them on a, on a shelf and letting them collect dust for months and months is not going not to help you that much. You really want to practice these. I like every six months. Some companies do every 12. 
the key thing is that you pull that team together, have a tabletop exercise, we call them, which is basically, okay, let's pretend the website's down. What do we do? And then just go through the process, go through the plan. It'll give you an opportunity to be more familiar with it so you'll act more naturally if an event happens. And it'll also give you the opportunity to just kind of look at that procedure again, and, and you'll likely find opportunities to improve upon it. So that's a really great one. So there you have it, the five things that you can do to implement a, an incident response plan in your business today. To wrap up, you have list the disasters, identify the team, develop a plan, reporting procedures, and then test and improve. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, subscribe, and share with your friends. Thank you very much.